Welcome to Garden Delights. I'm Susan Howington, Family Consumer Science Agent with the Henry County Cooperative Extension, partnership with the University of Georgia. We have a great show for you today. We're going to be talking about okra. You're going to hear from Frank Hancock, our Agriculture and Natural Resource Agent. He's going to talk more about that okra. So when we come back, we're going to talk about okra and how to make okra, corn, creo. See you back in just a little bit. We're talking about okra today. We're going to be making a great recipe. It's called okra and corn uh, creo. I hope you're going to like it. Of course, you'll hear from Frank about more about okra. But let's talk about okra. Uh, it's one of my favorite vegetables out there. Um, I can't wait when I put it in the garden for it to be ready because it is something that I really, truly love. And it's so versatile on how you can cook it. But let's talk about what's so good about okra. Okra is such a good vegetable for us to consider to put into our diet. It is great, great source of vitamin A and vitamin C, but mostly in vitamin C. It is wonderful in our fiber and we don't get enough fiber, so this okra can give us that fiber that we need for our diet. It also gives us a little bit of iron and calcium in our diet, but the good thing is it's no cholesterol and it's fat free and that's what we're always looking for in our vegetables and things that we can eat to keep that calories down in our diets. So those are just some good things that this is uh, good for as far as our okra. But it is, when I talk about low in calories, it's only seven pods, about seven of these pods is 25 calories. So I could eat this whole bowl of, of okra and my calories would be very low and we know it's cholesterol and saturated fat free also. Just remember about seven pods is 25 calories. Now, when you're selecting your okra, this actually came out of my garden, so I'm excited because this was some okra that I just picked actually this morning. Um, and okra, if you don't watch it, it grows so fast that you really have to keep an eye on it. Now, when you buy it at the grocery store, it's a done deal. You, you can pick out what you like. But when you, you're growing your okra, it's, once it's getting ready, you really have to pay attention to looking at it seeing when you need to cut it off because it'll grow so fast that it'll get too tough for you. So you want to look for okra that's about, you know, keep it in the four inch range. That's what you want to look for in small pods. If it becomes even larger, it can get really tough and stringy and you don't want that because you've waited so long for that okra. So you want to keep it as small as you can. Um, and this is a perfect size um, if you're looking for okra to start picking out of your, your garden. So don't let it go overboard because if we get any rain, it'll go grow really fast and then you won't have time to get it out and it will get stringy and it's also tough to eat and then you can't eat it. But you could save your seeds if you wanted to. Um, also, you want to look for bright green because that's what you're looking for in your okra when you buy it in the grocery store. So make sure it looks like it's been picked, it looks fresh when you're buying it there also. Now storage, um, once you pick your okra, it'll stay in your refrigerator for about three days. So in three days, you need to make up your mind on what you want to do as far as that okra. Do you want to go ahead and prepare it and eat it now? Or are you going to savor it and wait to the winter and do it as far as you can you could, uh, can it? Um, for pickled okra or you can freeze it and make uh, fried okra later in the winter time or you can take it and make like we're going to do today we're going to use it for creo so really that's what's so good about it but what I also like about okra is you can cook it out or broil it in your in your um, stove or grill it on your grill and it turns out really good um, and the reason why I want to share this with you is because okra has a substance and it is called mucilage and what happens is it helps it retain the water so when you're cooking um, it kind of sometimes makes it come slimy and that's what people don't like about okra if you boil okra and you don't like it it's because most people don't like it because it becomes real slimy but that is that is the part but the good thing about the mucilage is it will help it when you're making creo or a soup because it makes it get thicker in that soup or creo, which really helps because it keeps it combined together. So those are some good things about okra and how it does it. Now preparing it, you do have to wash it. So these have been washed. So you always have to wash your okra. And then um, we're going to slice in this or cut it. Some people in some recipes will cut it down the center and they'll use it straight down the center. But today for our recipe, then we use it, it's gonna be cut into slices. So we'll do that when we do our recipe. Just to kind of give you some uh, tidbits about the okra, but the good thing is it is so nutritional for us. So we wanna make sure we have this in our diet 
pretty regularly because it's going to provide us with some great nutrients and it's great in fiber and it's also going to give us that great vitamin A and C that we also need. Um, also, it's a seasonal, okra is seasonal, so the, the peak of seasonal um, okra is between, you're going to plant it and you're going to get it between May and October. So we still have a little bit of ways to go before our okra is going to be gone and it depends on how the weather is in October, it may even go further than October. When we come back, we're going to talk more about that corn and um, the okra and we're going to make the corn and Creo with the okra and hopefully you're going to like it. Um, it's very easy, it's a little uh, easy steps to it and we'll see you back in just a little bit. Okay, today we're going to talk about okra. And I got to tell you, I'm not allergic to very many things I can walk through poison oak and poison ivy and it doesn't bother me, but when I get in the okra patch, it makes me itch. So if you're gonna work in the okra, I'm recommending the long sleeve shirt and the gloves just to keep it off of you. It's nothing, nothing serious, but uh, you'll be more comfortable if you protect yourself from, from, from the uh, little spines and things that are on the okra. Uh, okra is in the mallow family. It is akin to cotton and hibiscus. And as you can see, the flowers on the okra are very pretty. They're, uh, and so it, it makes a, a, a nice addition to the garden to have the pretty flowers. These flowers are, are self-pollinating. Uh, they bloom one day and then they start forming a pod. Uh, that pod will be ready to pick in, in about four days after it blooms. So uh, when you're growing okra, you need to stay after it because what you would like to have are these pods that are four to six inches long that, uh, that are tender. But once they get big, they get tough and they're not near as good as they are when they're young and tender. So in an okra patch like the one we're in right here, uh, you're gonna be picking this about every other day. You're gonna be walking through here harvesting okra. Okra is generally grown from seed. You can get transplants. The uh, problem with okra transplants is they are real tender. They're, they're hard to to, to not damage when you're transplanting them. So if you're gonna do transplants, you need to, to you know, pay close attention to how you handle them. But most of it is grown from seed. It's a tropical plant. It, uh, it needs the soil to be 60 plus degrees. Uh, it likes well-drained soil, pH of six to seven, somewhere in that range. Uh, it's tolerant of a lot of different soils. It grows in a lot, of, a, a lot of different places, but it is a tropical plant, so it likes warm weather. If you plant it too early, you can get uh, damping off disease where it's just too, the soil is too cold and, and, and too moist, and it just the plants don't do well. So you're gonna be planting okra late April, 1st of May, uh, when the soil warms up. So that's, uh, as you can see, okra can get fairly tall, uh, so you just just deal with that. You have to be careful not to put too much nitrogen fertilizer on it. We put like a, a pound of, of uh, 10, 10, 10 per 100 feet of row space when, before we plant it. Then we come back once it starts maturing, we can side dress it with another pound of 10, 10, 10 per 100 square feet. Uh, but don't go too heavy on it. You, uh, during the season, every four to five weeks, you know, no, no sooner than once a month would you try to add any fertilizer to it because if you get too much nitrogen, you'll see here behind me, there's some plants back there that are eight feet tall. They can't hardly harvest those. So that becomes a problem when the okra gets too tall. Uh, you're probably better off to plant two batches of okra, so if it does get too tall and you get, get tired of dealing with the height of it, you're better off to have another batch coming along 
maybe three or four weeks behind it that you just start harvesting that. Uh, you can cut it back and shorten it up, but when you do, uh, it starts to grow like a bush and it gets hard to deal with, hard to work through. Uh, and you also lose three or four weeks of production when you cut it back before it starts producing again. So um, if you need to cut it back, you can, but it, like I say, you lose some production. Uh, you have to keep harvesting okra. If the pods get, get too mature, if you let them get too big, you need to cut those off and just get rid of them. But if you leave them on the plant, the plant will sort of stop producing. It won't produce near as much if it's carrying some mature pods. So everything comes off when you're harvesting it. We'll plant our seed about an inch deep, uh, about 12 inches apart, rows 36 to 48 inches wide. Uh, some folks like to plant, uh, just plant them fairly close together and then come back after it comes up and, and thin them out so that they get that, that foot separation between the plants. Uh, a lot of folks will soak the seed. Okra seed is, is very hard and it's, uh, so it uh, can use a little soaking. Sometimes they'll try to scare a fat. That's a little hard to do to okra seed. So mostly they'll soak it in water for 24 hours before they plant it. And then it needs to be planted in warm soil and your germination ought to be pretty good when you do that. Okra is, can have, there, there's several diseases that okra can get, blights and uh, sometimes nematodes will bother it, uh, fusarium wilt and some of those kind of things can affect it. Generally, it is a pretty healthy plant. Uh, a little crop rotation won't hurt anything. Don't plant it in the same place every year to try to control some of those diseases. Uh, insects, th there's also some insects that'll bother it. Uh, Leaf-footed bugs, um, stink bugs. This pod that I'm looking at right here that's curled over, a lot of people ask what causes that, and most likely that's stink bug damage where they've, they've penetrated that side of the plant. That side of the plant has quit growing. Uh, and and the, the other side keeps on growing and that's what causes it to curl over like that. Okay, now here's one that's been missed for a little while and it's, it's too tough. It's not going to be good to eat. It, one way you can tell, you can just kind of cut into it. It's not tender. And so when you get one that got away from you, you still need to take it off, but you don't need to keep it. Okay. I think we're ready to go see what Susan's fixing in the kitchen. We're talking about okra today, and we're going to be making okra and corn creo, and I hope you're going to like it. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what's in the recipe, just so you know, because I have some things already pre-prepared, and I want to make sure you know this. Um, this recipe is going to tell you just some kind of a spicy smoked sausage, but I love um, this Koneka sausage, and you could use Andouille sausage. Really, it's up to you, but I do like Koneka sausage. It's a little bit spicy sausage. Um, it cooks up really well. Um, so this is about one-fourth of a pound of the cooked sausage. And then I also have fresh tomatoes, and this is, a, this is gonna be about two cups of your fresh tomatoes. We also have onions, which is a cup of onions. We have one teaspoon of garlic. And then we also have some Creo because I talked about it being a Creo. So we do have a little bit of Creo and I've mixed a little bit of the pepper with the Creo just so you could see. So the Creo is gonna be one teaspoon of Creo and a fourth of a teaspoon of the pepper. So those are already together in this um, little container. And then you're gonna have two ears of corn also and I'm using fresh corn. You could use frozen corn. You, you could also use your frozen um, okra. But I chose as much as I could for this season to use fresh everything that I could find fresh. So what I want to do first is I'm going to go ahead and cut the, the corn up and what I want to do is use my bowl as my starting point and I'm going to cut this uh, the corn off the ear 
and I love fresh corn, so I'm going to go ahead and do that because that's going to be my stabilizer to make sure I knock all those kernels off into the bowl. So I'm going to cut all this off. And um, you could use um, canned corn or you could use frozen corn, but you know, you can't always um, wait till the end season when you want a Creo. But if you're in the mood for a Creo and it's corn is in season, it's a perfect time to use your corn as far as cutting it off your, um, your um, corn off. So just um, know that it's easy to do because uh, about two ears is what you're going to need because that's going to make it enough um, to get what you need for this recipe. So just remember you need about a cup of corn and about two ears is going to give you that cup. So I'm almost done cutting this off and then I'm going to move into the okra and cut it up for you guys. Let's see, one more little piece of it. And you can see that's about a cup. And I'm gonna put the cobs right there. I'm gonna wipe my hands up a little bit. And then I'm gonna start cutting up on the okra. I'm gonna set this aside. And for the recipe, you're going to need about two cups and this is fresh okra, and like I said, you could do the frozen if you really wanted to. Um, and I'm just going to take the tops off um, of the okra, and I'm going to cut it up, and I'm going to try to keep it so I can show you about how many pods of okra you would need to do um, two cups. So, and I usually don't take the, the, the tips too much because I like it just to look like the slice part. So I'm going to set those aside. Now, if you're doing fried okra and you want that part of it, please put that in with it if you want to. So as you can see, this is already going to add up. And I can already see that little slimy part that people don't like. But it's once you start cooking it, it's even better as far as that goes. When okra gets too large, you can tell when you start putting your knife into it, um, it's, it's hard to cut through and you'll know that too automatically and you'll probably just say, well, that's too tough and you'll have to set it aside. But okra is too hard to come by the way I look at it. So I'm always looking to make sure I get it as soon as I can so that I have it um, ready to be able to use it. And I will take it and freeze uh, my okra a lot to make um, fried okra because I do like fried okra in the winter time. So, um, Keep that in mind when you're deciding what you want to do. Um, I know a lot of people like to make pickled okra, and it's really good also. So if you're into canning, that's a great way to uh, prolong that okra and make it where you can um, eat it later. Um, we have a person that comes to our office pretty regularly, and a lot of times he does pickle okra, and he'll bring us some, and it's really good. And then you can make other things too using your okra too. You don't just have to have just pickle okra. You can do other things too that you can use to, um, to make your okra go longer into the winter months. So just to give you an idea, I did count this okra and it is about, about 25 to 30 pods is gonna give you um, the two cups. But just remember, all the pods are gonna be different sizes. So you're going to have to uh, think about that because you may be able to add your two cups pretty, pretty fast as far as that goes. So just keep that in mind when you're cutting it up. And it doesn't take long for it to fill into this, this. so I'm going to cut some more up. And this is a little over 25 because I wanted to make sure I had enough washed up so I'd have enough to uh, cut the two cups up. So I'm just barely cutting the tips off. And um, I don't like it too, too large on the slice size, so it just depends on what you're doing your okra for. You know, you may want just a little bit bigger in the slices if you're doing okra, the fried okra, but it does take it longer. Um, the larger you get, it takes it longer for you to cook also. So just keep that in mind too. So we're almost there. I need to break that up just a little bit more of getting our two cups. We'll take just a little bit more see what we can get.
And just think about all the good fiber that that okra is going to give you while you're eating it too. But I will tell you that one of our favorite ways to eat at our house is on the grill. And what I do is I take a little bit of a, of, of a spray and I spray the okra um, just to coat it. Um, you could use olive oil or something like that too if you wanted to. Um, and then I do a little bit of season on it. And once I season it, I put it on the grill. And I know if you have cooked okra before, what I like about okra is when you start cooking, when it, as soon as it hits the, the heat hits it, it starts turning this beautiful green color to me. And um, it's such a pretty color. And you know it's starting to get ready. Same way with the grill. When you're cooking on the grill, it will start turning this beautiful green color and you'll know that you need to flip it once it starts turning that little, that green, bright green color because that tells you it's cooking. And then you want to um, flip it to another side and by the time you do that, we'll do two more. Um, by the time you do that, the okra is almost ready and it makes it very crunchy and uh, you can take it and pretty much eat the whole pod. Um, the good thing about it is you're not frying it, so you're eating very healthy with that okra. So that's the good thing about eating the okra. So that's about our two cups that we need for the okra. So we're going to add, leave my stems right there. We're going to add this two cups of okra to our corn of two ears of corn. And I am going to add the other ingredients because that's the good thing about this. Once you do it, you can uh, mix it all together. I do want to tell you this, that I've already browned the sausage ahead of time, so it's already cooked. So I'm going to go ahead and add it also to the ingredients. And then I'm going to add the fresh tomatoes, which is going to be so good because they're fresh. That's two cups of tomatoes. Let's see if I can stack some of this. Side. And then we have that cup of onions, chopped onions. And notice this is going together pretty simple. And I love garlic, so we're going to add that little garlic to it, which is one teaspoon of the garlic. And then I'm going to add the season. I'm going to kind of sprinkle it on top because I really want to make sure that it incorporates all through there. And this is a Creole season. And there's different brands out there that you might like to try. Um, and you may have your favorite that you're going to try. And what I'm going to do now is just kind of mix this up together because I want to make sure that season gets all through that okra uh, on the tomatoes, the corn. Um, if we get that all mixed in together, then it gives a, a great taste. Now, I talked about um, the okra releasing that slimy part when it hits the... Uh, so it's really important that we add water to this because this is going to help the Creo because you can see that it, it releases um, that part, that slimy part of it. And we're going to add that water, which is the half a cup of water to finish this ingredients out for the recipe because it's going to need it. Now you know that uh, you've got a little bit of water in your tomatoes. So you know that once this hits the heat, you're going to have um, all this heat it up and it's going to get even more, a little bit more liquid than what you see right here. But this is all you need to fix this up. Now, one thing it's going to say on the recipe that you could add this to rice, but we're going to choose not today. We're just going to have a Creo in a bowl, but if it gets to the winter time and you want to add something else to make it your whole meal, add some rice to it and it'll be great. So what we're going to do is I'm going to reach down here and grab my Dutch oven and this is what we're going to use to cook the Creole in. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the Dutch oven. Now once it's in the Dutch oven, you're going to start it off at medium heat for about five minutes because you want to get it to where it's kind of bubbling. So once you see it kind of bubbling in the Dutch oven, you're going to cut it down and simmer it for about another 15 minutes. That is the 15 minutes if you think your vegetables are tender like you want them to be. So it may go a little bit longer just depending on. Now the recipe will also say it serves about four people. So just to let you know how much this is filling up this casserole dish. Um, so you're going to do this for five minutes, another 15 minutes. 
um, on simmering. And then once you do that, the 15 minutes, you do need to put the lid on the first five minutes, no lid, the next 15 minutes with the lid. And you're going to cook this until everything is tender in the way you like it. And you'll see the water release as it comes through the tomatoes also to help it. Um, and then once it's done, it, you're ready to eat. So we come back, we'll have Frank come back and taste our Creo and hopefully he's going to like it as much as we do. We'll see you back in just a little bit. Welcome back to Garden Delights. We have Frank with us and we're going to taste that okra Creo with that little extra corn that's fresh in it. Now before you get started, I've been doing a little research on okra on the internet. I studied on it. It's not what you think. What's that? The first thing that came up was the Oklahoma Rocket Association. And, you know, so it's got to be true. The Oklahoma Rocket Association's mascot is the okra. Is the okra. You can see that right there. That is too funny. So okra is moving up in the world. Then the next thing that came up was the Delta State University mascot from Cleveland, Mississippi. Uh -huh. You know where Cleveland, I Mississippi do. I is? I do. The fighting okra. That is too cool. Fear the okra. So all this time that I've been talking about it, I didn't know how it famous is. it actually was. So, I mean, go ahead. I didn't want it to interrupt you. It's but, famous, but not but, only that, but maybe they're trying to tell us also we need to eat more okra because it's healthier. That's for us what too. I found out on the internet. Okay. Anyway, so. That sounds great. That sounds great. Well, let's taste it and see what you think. All right. Um, so, it's been cooking, and so you can see the okra has got a, a different color to it. It's been cooking, and so it's gone through the process, and Frank. Everything in here is just about fresh, except for like our meat and everything, so I hope you're gonna like it. Give you a little bit more. More is always better. All right. Okay. Let's see what you think. Now I'll put some Creole season in there. If you think it's too spicy, you know, you could always leave that part out. That's good. Is it good? It is good, real good. The fresh corn really makes a difference to me. Mm-hmm. We talked about corn another time. Um, that is good, Frank. You know, you can fry it. You can pickle it. That's right. You can boil it. And amazingly enough, it always tastes like okra. Mm-hmm. It does. I can taste that spice to it. It's really good. You can, you know, eliminate your spice, but I love it. I could even add a little bit more spice to it. I hope that you'll try this recipe. It's, it's a really easy but tasty uh, recipe as far as the okra and corn creo. If you're thinking about it, please check out our website. The recipe will be there for you. We'll see you back next time on Garden Delights.